one of the issues, and uh, this almost became a minor conspiracy theory on the internet, was that we had a satellite go down uh, earlier in the season. And uh, I, I have to tell you, I had a number of uh, uh, commenters on my blog talking about how they must be making it up now because they, they read somewhere that the satellites weren't working. So can you speak to that? Yeah, we actually were pretty clear about what happened and um, uh, sort of, I thought, walked people through it fairly well. We saw some really erratic re uh, readings from the F-17 satellite, I believe starting in about um, May. And then um, soon after we switched to an already orbiting satellite that we were still pre preparing to bring online. So we sped up things like the cross calibration and the overlap check to make sure that we didn't have to adjust our numbers. We were prepared to adjust them and it turned out that the sensors were so well calibrated we didn't need to. Um, uh, in fact, what happened after the F-18 satellite started providing us data was that we went from uh, distinctly new record low days, day by day through uh, April and May, to a pattern that was closer to the past records of 2012 and 2007. And at the end of the season, um, F-17 had been stable for a period of time. We didn't want to switch back, but we did want to take a look at how well we were doing coming towards the minimum, which we knew would be close to a record and actually uh, published in our blog a comparison of what the two satellites were showing. Um, would have liked to have seen the lines overlie exactly. They were a little different, but there are difference in times of acquisition uh, for the two satellites. Uh, no difference in processing, really. So there's a little bit of a difference. Um, that said, it's going to sound large, 25, 30,000 square kilometers, but in the scale of millions of square kilometers, we do a pretty good job of measuring sea ice area. And what we saw were identical trends slightly offset as we approached the minimum from both satellites through this period where F-17 was uh, providing what we considered to be reliable data, even though we're sticking with the F-18 satellite. And I just want to say to folks that are listening out there that having consistent measurements from sensor to sensor is really important, and we care a lot about that. And for just the reason of questions about what happens when we change satellites, We'd certainly like to encourage um, uh, NASA and the military to launch a remaining satellite that's been mothballed for a few years. It's the last of this sensor type. It provides us a consistent record that will span a lot more than 40 years, possibly 45 years, uh, with the average life of these satellites. That's going to really help us keep uh, the climate story straight and consistent as we go through the 2020s. So I'm hoping that happens. I think we've made a strong case with the failure of F-17 and our inability to rely on it. And uh, maybe that will encourage them to uh, put it in a vehicle and send it up to space rather than throw it away, which is being discussed. Wow. Okay, so, so F-17 is still usable, or are we going to just walk completely away from that? Or? Um, NSIDC won't use it, but we'll continue. We get all the data streams um, anyway. We'll continue to keep an eye on it. Um, in times when we've got a question, it's a, a, like I said in the blog, actually, we called it a second opinion on the uh, diagnosis of what was going on. The... Uh, uh, we'll stick with F-18, and we're hoping that F-20, uh, I believe it's F-20, uh, is launched soon so that we have a further backstop um, in the future. There are other satellites out there that measure it and other blogs that report it, but the consistent record and the one that most people have worked on um, is the um, defense meteorological satellite data that, that we archive here.